Welcome to Lecture Outline 8, Chapter 5, where we talk a lot about light and a little about quantum mechanics and end up with where the electrons are in atoms. We're going to start with the nature of light, and in particular, its wave-like nature. And this may be uh, somewhat familiar to you. Light uh, is uh, a form of electromagnetic radiation that travels as a wave. It is composed of perpendicular oscillating waves, one for the electric and one for the magnetic field. And so the direction of travel is to the right, and perpendicular to that, also sometimes called orthogonal, are uh, an electric field component and a magnetic field component. So there are three directions. The light is traveling to the right, the plane of the electric field is up and down, and the magnetic field is perpendicular to that. It's a little complicated. Uh, from now on, though, we are going to ignore the magnetic field component and just draw it as a single traveling wave traveling to the right, um, although direction for light uh, doesn't have a whole lot of meaning. Um, another thing I want to point out is that light is composed of photons, And the smallest amount of light is a single photon. So a single photon is the smallest uh, form of any kind of electromagnetic radiation, including light, including visible light. or other electromagnetic radiation. And what we'll see is that light, uh, because you can either have zero photons, one photon, two photons, three photons, or for any light bulbs that you commonly see, uh, at least 10 to the 20 or more, almost moles of photons, um, we're going to see uh, that, uh, but because you can only have zero or one on a small scale, light is quantized. And that's where the term quantum mechanical model starts with, with things being quantized. That means they can only have discrete values. You can have zero photons, you can have one photon, you can have two photons, but you can't have half a photon. And it's sort of like atoms that way. And electrons, you can have one atom, you can have one electron, one proton, but you can't have half. Uh, and this is all electromagnetic uh, radiation waves uh, or photons, uh, comprised of photons, move through space at the same constant speed, the speed of light. That speed of light is represented by the symbol C, lowercase c, which, uh, and the number is 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. And we wanna just take a second here to differentiate light and other electromagnetic radiation from sound. Sound is different because sound travels by vibrating the air molecules as it travels through air or any medium. Light needs no medium. There needs to be no particles. Uh, another thing we will know about sound, uh, light is that a photon and all light it has no mass. Oh, and the speed of sound is approximately 340 meters per second, much slower. Now, uh, light wave or photon light wave characteristics. The principal ones we're gonna look at, the first one is wavelength. It has the lowercase Greek letter lambda. It is the distance from peak to peak, also called crest to crest. Uh, although you could also do it trough to trough or any point. So uh, the peaks or the troughs are just a convenient way of finding the same spot on the wave. Uh, you could also do it from midpoint up to this midpoint as well. Wavelength will be lambda down here from trough to trough, lambda. 
And in fact, waves, uh, while they have crests and troughs, those are only for us to conveniently talk about them. If you turn a wave upside down, uh, the trough becomes a peak because there is no necessary, there's no definite up or down for waves. Now frequency, frequency is the number of wavelengths that pass a point in a given period of time. If we look at two different types of waves, one with a long wavelength, and so here's the wavelength here. Uh, here's the wavelength down here. So this has a long wavelength. And let's say that this wave uh, travels this far in one second. And then we have a second wave, or a second photon, if you will. with a short wavelength, I guess we should say longer or shorter, that also travels this same distance in one second. What we will see is that the number of wavelengths uh, for the wave with a shorter wavelength, the waves pass by a given point more frequently, and that's how we get the uh, term frequency. Frequency is the number of wavelengths that pass a given point or a period uh, point in a given period of time. And what we will see is that longer wavelength leads to uh, lower frequency. And the way that I draw the frequency symbol here is like a V, except it's got a V with a shelf straight across, straight down, swoop up. Uh, and you just want to be make sure that you separate it from V for volume and V for velocity, however you draw it. Shorter wavelength is going to have higher frequency. And now uh, let's go to the equation that relates wavelength and frequency. They are related by the speed of light. So the speed of light, as we said, is 3.00 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Wavelength would generally be in meters. And frequency, frequency has a couple sets of units. Uh, the basic set of unit is one over seconds. So if we have meters per second for speed of light, we'll have meters and per seconds or one over seconds for frequency. We can also refer to this, and we will, as seconds to the minus one, which is another way of saying one over seconds. and Another word for one over seconds, or seconds to the minus one, is hertz. And the abbreviation for hertz is hz. So all three of these you will see. You have to be able to translate that a hertz is a one over second or a per second. Uh, the longest wavelength of red light has a wavelength of 750 nanometers. What is its frequency? Using the equation we just gave you, we have that the speed of light is 3.00 meters per second. Our uh, freak, or, sorry, wavelength is 750 nanometers. However, we said that we have to use meters in this equation. So we'll turn nanometers into meters, knowing that one nanometer is one times 10 to the minus ninth meter. And 750 times one exponent nine minus. I get 7.5, where I will add the zero, times 10 to the minus seventh meters. And another way of doing this that I will use in future problems is that nanometer means times 10 to the minus nine meters. So I'll just take 750 and immediately replace it by times 10 to the minus nine meters. 
and I will get the same answer as well, since it's the same math. Regardless of how you do it, we know that 7.50 times 10 to the minus 7 meters is the wavelength. We don't know our frequency. Divide through And I get 4 or 4.00 to 3 sig figs times 10 to the 14. My meters cancel. I'm left with 1 over seconds. And uh, that is my set of units. Also, I could write seconds to the minus 1 or hertz. Let's think about what that number means for a second. With a wavelength of 750 nanometers, and that wave is traveling at 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. That means that red light, if there's a red wavelength of light passing by my finger, the uh, wavelength, 750 nanometers, that means that past my finger will go 4.00 times 10 to the 14 wavelengths per second. And we've cut out the wavelengths part it is just a units of per second. Now, uh, for the 5G cell phone network, one cell phone character uses a frequency of 39 gigahertz. What is the wavelength of this electromagnetic radiation? Well, let's take apart this 39 gigahertz. We uh, turns out that a giga means I can write it, times 10 to the sixth, and our hertz means seconds to the minus one. So I'm gonna replace 39, oh, sorry, kilo, mega, giga, times 10 to the ninth, times 10 to the ninth. Uh, so I'm gonna replace one gigahertz with one times 10 to the ninth, seconds to the minus one. I get 3.9 times 10 to the 10, seconds to the minus one. Now I can plug that into the uh, speed of light equals wavelength times frequency. And I get a wavelength of 7.69 times 10 to the third, uh, minus third meters, which is a fine answer. I'm going to then convert it into millimeters by moving the decimal point three places and removing the exponent. So the cell phone signals, uh, they will have approximately millimeter wavelengths, and sometimes they're called millimeter waves. We can see that the frequency here is significantly less than for visible light, and the wavelength is significantly longer. Uh, and that's because wavelength and frequency are inversely related. Now, Let's figure out where we are in the electromagnetic spectrum. First off, here's the visible region. It's only a very tiny portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. Within that, you have to go from red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Red is the lowest energy. It is also the longest wavelength uh, and the lowest frequency. Visible color. So, and then within the visible region, we also have the highest energy for violet. Uh, and online, you'll see that this is in color, I apologize. Uh, highest uh, energy, uh, lowest wavelength, and highest frequency. 
And those kinds of trends uh, go beyond um, just the visible region as you go to higher and higher frequencies and higher and higher energies you'll go to ultraviolet then x-ray then gamma rays in the other direction you'll go to infrared microwave and radio waves and here's our cell phone waves out here now what do you have to know as far as the order of these and their energies you have to know that infrared has longer wavelengths than red and is a lower energy you have to know that ultraviolet is higher energy than violet and you also have to know Roy G. Biv as you go from red to orange to yellow down to violet, uh, the order of the energies and wavelengths. You don't have to know the exact numbers, just the order. Now, waves are known to interfere. If you've ever been in the tub or the ocean, you know that waves traveling in different directions uh, or in even the same direction can interfere with each other. When waves interact so that they add to make a larger wave, it is called constructive interference. And what we might imagine is that each of these is a wavelength of, 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 a, specific, of a specific photon. So these are single photons. They just so happen to have their peaks at the same position and time. So their peaks are aligned. And the word for that, or another word for that, is in phase. And when they're in phase, they add together to make a wave that has twice as high a uh, amplitude. And we focus on wavelength and frequency for the properties of waves. However, the more waves you have together in phase, you're going to get higher amplitude and uh, let's say higher amplitude. And another way of saying that when you get enough is you get a brighter light. And that's constructive interference when the waves are in phase and they add. On the other hand, there is also destructive interference. That's when the waves are out of phase. Another way of saying that is that the peaks are not aligned. And in this case, the peak and the trough are perfectly aligned and they exactly cancel each other, leading to destructive interference and no wave. And this is an attempt to draw no wave. So you can have constructive interference, you can have destructive interference, and uh, next thing we need as far as wave-like properties of light is that when wa traveling waves encounter an obstacle, they diffract uh, through that obstacle. So if we have waves, and we can imagine since these are the wave crests or peaks, that our wave is going like this, and that the approximate uh, wavelength of the wave is uh, similar to the size of the slit or hole that uh, or opening that the light is going through. When that happens, you will have a diffracted wave and the diffracted wave uh, is bent around that hole. So that is uh, diffraction. And that is when you have a single opening or a single slit. Then you go to a double slit, so double slit and you have a light source and this works for water as well water waves but we're gonna focus now on light or any kind of electromagnetic radiation as the waves go through two slits you will have diffraction at each of those and those waves those diffracted waves will then exactly constructively interfere and produce a bright spot and destructively interfere and produce a dark spot. And these will alternate from uh, on a screen in which 
the light hits and you have a front view of dark light dark light and you can see what the waves are doing to create those spots and uh, we will talk about this quite a bit for light soon for electrons and when we do you will be asked to draw the results of this type of experiment on the screen and what I'll be looking for when you draw an interference pattern also called a diffraction pattern is alternating areas of light and dark on the screen. So that's how you draw it on the homework, something like that anyway. And this is the and this is what waves do. Waves cause diffraction through a double slit to create a diffraction or interference pattern.